Good morning. My name is Huey Lin, and we just had a wonderful uh, Grand Rounds uh, talk by uh, Dr. Michael Landsberg from Boston, from the Boston Delk and General Heart Group, as well as Brigham and Women's and Boston Children's Hospital. So today we're going to actually talk about some of the very important topics in adult congenital heart disease. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the things that we think about on a daily basis. So, Mike, um, one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about recently is really the monumental advances in our field that have changed in terms of where we stand in cardiology in general. So, for example, in 2015, there was for the very first time ABIM and ABP certification for adult congenital heart disease. And then more recently, the Adult Congenital Heart Association started issuing accreditation to centers for adult congenital heart disease. What do you think is going to be the next big thing that really carries forward the field and really establishes us as um, a regular daily part of adult cardiology? Well, thanks for asking, Yui. I've been honored and I feel awkward using it. I've been blessed to be in the field for uh, close to 30 years. And I've watched the evolution of care for adults with congenital heart disease over, over that time. If, if you go back, even before the last five years in terms of really, as the words that you chose, monumental, uh, the, the huge changes that have semi-legitimized uh, this unique field. We, we began as a field uh, with a bit of a generation before me with a few remarkable characters of, of care providers that established programs, sentinel programs across North, North America and Europe. And this handful of remarkable trainers, teachers, bedside clinicians uh, engendered a bunch of mentees that went around the country and sort of spread the word. And we were considered uh, remarkable bedside clinicians, uh, really good and caring doctors. Uh, and I think we were welcomed by our colleagues uh, as such. But as you're right, uh, I don't think the field was going to change much. And the evolution that we saw in terms of the survival of our patients uh, may in part have been due to us, may in part have been done to the rest, due to the rest of the advances of medicine, cardiology, uh, cardiac surgery, uh, or life. Patients survived. That's the reality. Our patients survived. Uh, and as I've heard you speak, and as uh, an attestation to this program here, our patients survive in general well through their 20s and 30s and then the crisis, the tsunami occurs when other medical and life issues and cardiovascular issues befall our patients. And so the reality is this million, million and a half of adults with congenital heart disease across this country have significant medical needs or at least a good half to two thirds of them have those medical needs. Legitimacy is uh, a combination of what, uh, of both how we think, culture, uh, in terms uh, of how all of us uh, see medicine, uh, and the reality of strategy. But what's the expression? Culture always trumps strategy. It, it, we have to change uh, how people think. Part of that was the building of a real finite and expanding body of literature that examined the nature, the course of congenital heart disease that showed ourselves as clinicians and showed our colleagues uh, that there was a special physiology of heart failure, pulmonary vascular disease, multiple organ system disease that our patients experienced and that we needed to accrue education, knowledge acquisition, competencies in terms of care for. Hence, as, as you suggested and as you mentioned, the certification for training in the care of adults with congenital heart disease. And then the reality that I've seen you build here in Methodist, which is not just a singular clinician, but a team, a multidisciplinary team and a support system so that that patient who comes with congenital heart disease to your program, but shows with a non-cardiovascular issue, with their cancer, with their diabetes, with their other outside the heart issues, they're at greater risk of dying because of the heart failure, the inflammation that they've been suffering. You need to have a multidisciplinary support team and data have shown that that support system, that center of care, not just the ACHD dot, but that center of care is critical in terms of survival. So as you suggested as well, it's the accreditation of programs and centers in the care of adults with congenital heart disease. And then your question is appropriate, what now? We've got an infrastructure in place of a growing number of 
docs, care providers, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, nurses, administrators who are part of our teams and support teams. How do we build our legitimacy amongst our colleagues uh, who in some ways have been still kind to us? Um, and I think the answer goes to something we talked a little bit about earlier today. Most of us are really solid clinicians. We care, are caring for our patient and the medical care we provide, I believe, is excellent and on par with our colleagues in major medical institutions like here. But it's that body of knowledge. It's that definition of real science behind what we do that changes the world. That's the culture that we live in. People know that we care. We've developed strategies. We've brought together major stakeholders. They get us as a field. But it's accruing that body of knowledge and taking ourselves who had the mission and felt the mission of care for these patients, the underdogs, if you will, of cardiology. And now it's our obligation to firm up that foundation that's been recognized by the American Board of Internal Medicine, by the ACGME, by all the accrediting and certifying bodies, but we need to enrich that. And I think that without that, our colleagues will see us as a nice bunch of practicing clinicians but not yet with them. And we walk with them as we substantiate the rest of our field. That's a great answer. I, one of the things that, um, that you mentioned that I think is really important um, and has been something that has also been uh, occupying my mind a lot is um, the idea of these trainees, these mentees that we have. Um, so now there will soon be a formal ACGME um, accredited adult congenital heart training programs all over the country. Um, and I think that this it comes none too early, none too soon, um, because we are having all these patients all over the country in every nook and cranny of the United States, soon to be 2.2 million um, uh, by 2020, we think. So, so one of the things that sort of wakes me up in the middle of the night is, what do we do about these patients that are going to show up at the community hospital, the hospital that's two hours away from me? Um, I'm here in downtown Houston. Um, and I've got my adult congenital heart program with a multidisciplinary team. What do I do about those patients that are going to be out in our outlying community hospitals or even in the really well-established large tertiary care center hospital that doesn't actually have an adult congenital heart team? What can we do um, both as practitioners as well as uh, mentors um, for the future about making sure that we can provide care for those types of patients as well, those who show up at other hospitals that don't have adult congenital heart programs? The reality is that the vast majority of adults with congenital heart disease get good to excellent care out in the community. The, when you walk in front of the American College of Cardiology down in Bethesda, right in front of the college is this beautiful statue on a cylindrical pole of someone reaching down, reaching with their hand to grab the person climbing up the pole and to advance who they are, to bring them up to a higher level of knowledge, a higher level of care, a higher level of compassion uh, for the patients that we take care of. We're not an exclusionary group uh, of practitioners. We're there to advance all of our colleagues in terms of the pillars that we stand upon. Adults with congenital heart disease who have the most mild, the most moderate, the most complex of anatomic and physiologic disease, for the largest part, are not being seen in centers of experienced and expert care. They're being seen by solid general internists and solid general cardiologists. My brother, the solid general cardiologist, takes care of adults with complex congenital heart disease. When we go to meetings and we ask the audience of general cardiologists, do you take care of patients with single ventricles, fontans, transpositions of the great arteries, truncus arteriosus, hands go up. And we begin to wonder and say, but how do you, I just spent the last number of years thinking about how do you know this? And they say back, because of you. We learn with you. The art of being a generalist, the art of being an expert general internist, the art of being a gen, an expert general cardiologist is to be able to understand that basic amount of knowledge and practice it well and know when to reach out and to partner. We don't have the infrastructure and, and the people power to staff and to treat every medical interaction and encounter with our patients. It is our obligation 
if we are going to, in our centers of experience, our centers of excellence, in our accredited programs, if we're going to provide the central hub of excellence for our regions, it's our obligation to reach out to every one of those spokes and ensure that those spokes are provided for, that they are trained, that we are out there with them providing the backup infrastructure, the additional supports that are necessary to provide care and to partner. I remember uh, in our guidelines from 2008, soon to be updated, that we stated 24-7, if we were going to call ourselves a center of excellence, we needed to provide access to our partnering clinicians. And I remember getting that phone call from partnering physicians saying 24-7, who, where, when, uh, tell me, show me the money in terms of you being there. And the answer is we need to. Reality, we will provide experienced expert care when we need to in our own individual centers. And that need is real. And there's going to be a great number of patients that, that will need those specific centers. We need to have training programs. Training programs not for particular fellows, but we need to go out to our partnering centers and to have programs specific to them. And then at a larger scale, the American College of Cardiology has programs, provider action through treating congenital hearts, patch, like Patch Adams, patch, which goes out and targets large bodies of general practitioners at the state level of the American College of Cardiology and has training sessions, uh, excellent teaching sessions, the basics of, a general, of congenital heart disease in the adult kind of care. How do you partner? Who do you partner? Bringing together the practitioner with the local experts in that area so that people feel increasingly comfortable. There are additional programs that are designed just to teach the general cardiologist how to get comfortable with that patient that walks into the emergency room with a gallbladder attack and has a Fontan operation. What do you begin to do? I have to tell you, most of us are comfortable in what's the expression, in, in our own wheelhouse where, where we're used to getting that pitch coming across the plate, but when the ball's thrown a little bit differently, most of us practice avoidance behavior. And it's through simulation, through education, where we get practitioners comfortable with the unknown, but more importantly, comfortable with what they can do to engage and what they can do to communicate to us. So the answer, I, I feel a little bit bad, but I'm placing the onus on us as experts and experienced physicians in this field. If we wanna see a difference in terms of care, we're going to be the ones reaching out to the extremely busy general cardiologists and general internists and supporting services, and we need to teach our colleagues best supportive care, when to call us, how to call us. We don't own these patients. We own the education of our colleagues and we own the infrastructure and the systems of care, but it's our colleagues that are going to be doing the vast majority of the basic care. Not all that's in place for them, heart failure. Mm -hmm. Heart failure world is exactly the same. The perfect question and my expectation, watch over the next five to ten years, it's this current generation of adult and general heart disease practitioners who are going to be certified, programs that are going to be accredited, that's going to be leading the way in terms of this central hub and spokes model, uh, which should hopefully provide us with that kind of care system. Great, well, fantastic wise words from Dr. Landsberg. Um, and so Dr. Landsberg will also be giving us fellows conference uh, at noon today, as well as um, internal medicine conference tomorrow, and then joining us for the Adult Congenital Heart Symposium on November 18th. So, Please join us online for any of those events that you're interested in and continue the conversation about adult congenital heart disease. Thanks, Dr. Lansberg. Dr. Lynn, you have no idea how much of an honor it is to be here at really what was one of the central foundations of care for congenital heart disease here in Houston. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Lansberg.